Friday, everyone. Today we're going to talk about cardiovascular disease in a low-carb, high-fat diet. A question I get all the time is, can I follow a low-carb, high-fat diet if I already have heart disease? The quick answer is yes, but now let's get into the details on this a little bit more. All right, so why would anybody be concerned about this? Clearly the answer is because on a low-carb, high-fat diet, you're going to be eating a lot of fat. And look, we've been told for years, decades actually, that a low-fat diet is what's best for heart health. That is wrong. And it's not just me saying this. The leading experts in the field of nutrition all coalesce around one main idea, which is the dietary advice that we have been giving to remove fat from diet to promote heart health was in a nutshell very wrong. In fact, many of the leading experts have called a low-fat diet for heart health one of our biggest nutrition mistakes. So let's start out with that. Then let's start with risk factors. Okay, so we all know most of the main leading risk factors for heart disease. Some of them are not going to be directly impacted by a low-carb, high-fat diet, like smoking and family history. But there are many risk factors that will be positively affected by a low-carb, high-fat diet. Let's talk about the biggest one, which is diabetes and prediabetes. Actually, there was a huge study that did a mathematical analysis on NHANES database to figure out what the biggest risk factor for heart disease was, and it was determined to be insulin resistance, of course, the backbone of diabetes and prediabetes. So a low-carb, high-fat diet helping this risk factor is not small. It is a major impact on overall vascular risk. Very positively, again, impacted by a low-carb, high-fat diet. Next, let's talk about the big one, cholesterol, right? All right, well, as I've reviewed before, there are three main things we look about in cholesterol. Two of those things we lump together and call atherogenic dyslipidemia, which is low HDL cholesterol and elevated triglycerides. Well, atherogenic dyslipidemia is very positively affected by a low-carb, high-fat diet. In fact, really, there is no medicine even out on the market today that will improve atherogenic dyslipidemia quite as much quite frankly, usually anywhere near as much as a low-carb, high-fat diet. So a big thumbs up for that. What about LDL cholesterol? Again, I've touched on this before, and what we know is that about a third of people on a low-carb, high-fat diet will have their LDL go down, a third it'll stay the same, and about a third it will rise. And at this point in time, I'm going to say this again, I've said it before, until we get more information, those who go up I do consider that significant, and it's something that you need to be working with your physician on if you happen to fall into that group. We'll have more research on this in the future, but right now, again, as always, I'll say work with your doctor on this, but for the majority of people, LDL cholesterol either will not be impacted or it will be positively impacted. Another big risk factor for heart disease is elevated inflammation. Not the kind of inflammation like when you break a bone and you have acute inflammation. We're talking about systemic inflammation, chronic inflammation, that has been found to lead to a whole host of problems, cancer, vascular disease, potentially even some of our autoimmune problems. Well, we know, many studies have shown us, that a low-carb, high-fat diet will decrease the markers of inflammation. Very specifically, one that's used commonly to assess cardiac risk called a C-reactive protein. Again, another way that a low-carb, high-fat diet can really positively affect your overall cardiovascular risk. Now, I wanted to touch a little bit on some of the things that we know and some of the things that we don't know yet about low-carb, high-fat diets and cardiovascular risk. We don't know about a lot of lifestyle interventions. And this is the difference between a soft endpoint and a hard endpoint. Let me explain the difference here. If you take a study and you randomize people into two different groups and you treat them differently, 
and their groups are large enough and you measure it over a long enough period of time, you can get what is considered hard endpoint data. Hard endpoints mean what we really care about. Did the person die, did that group of people die more often from heart disease um, or did they have a major cardiovascular event? That's a hard endpoint study. Then there are a lot of soft endpoint studies where you compare the differences between cardiac risk factors between the two groups of people. Again, we're looking at just risk factors, not those more important uh, areas like actually having a heart attack or dying from heart disease. And what we know about low carb, high fat nutrition scientific evidence right now is we have an awful lot of soft endpoint data. We have a ton of evidence that a low carb, high fat diet improves cardiac risk factors and improves cardiac risk factors significantly over a low fat diet. What we don't have yet is a lot of hard endpoint data. We don't have evidence yet that it's going to impact cardiovascular disease deaths or that it's going to impact having a heart attack or having to have a major cardiovascular procedure. Those studies are yet to come. But one thing we do have to note is, do we have hard endpoint data, say, on another lifestyle intervention? Perhaps the low-fat diet that we've pushed for so long? The answer is yes, and guess what? It didn't help. That was a huge study called the Women's Health Initiative, and when they put people on a low-fat diet and they studied very large number of women over many years, they didn't find that the low-fat diet helped at all. So yes, we're missing this, right? And you'll hear that sometimes criticized. We don't have the hard endpoint data for a low-carb, high-fat diet. We have a lot of this, but we also have to remember we have the hard endpoint data for a low-fat diet and it didn't do us any good. And so this is just a realistic overall view of what we know about cardiovascular disease risk in a low carb, high fat diet, and quite frankly, again, what we don't know yet. So again, going back to the answer to the question, which is, can I follow a low carb, high fat diet if I have cardiovascular disease? Yes, you can. And again, I thank everybody for joining us today. It's Thanksgiving weekend beginning, so I wish everyone a happy holidays. Thanks again.